What a blessing always it is to communicate the word of God to the human race. One of the greatest privileges any man can ever have is to have the word of God in his mouth. I pray this day that the word of God is communicated according to his purpose and according to his own timetables and tables of times that he has for all the generations. It's our time in the Northwest because I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Anytime God is about to do something new, he requires a lot of prayer. There are burdens of, for prayer. There are, there are people who get the call of God to enter into seasons of prayer like never before. And I hear that all about this place and I'm sensing that something is about to happen. Something good is about to happen. We are about to just introduce to you one more time the second segment of the covenant of prayer. And I'm looking forward to to communicate with you what I believe God has put on my heart, in my spirit, for our generation in the Northwest. Mighty men of God like Daniel moved their generation according to the will of God. And the key they had was prayer. What Babylon couldn't supply, God supplied through those four Hebrew boys, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they prevail through the power of prayer, the consistency of prayer, and their trust in God to exceed the normal, to exceed the average. I pray this day that you are so hungry to go beyond the limitations of man. That's what prayer does for you. Prayer takes you to where nobody can take you. Prayer takes you to where no nation can take you. Prayer takes you to where no knowledge can take you. Prayer takes you to where no revelation of man's understanding can take you. Prayer takes you to where no human wisdom can take you. It takes you to the next dimension, which is the world of God, the dimension which we call off the chart, outside the box. And may the Lord stir your spirit this day. If there is any impossibility, knocking at your door, staring at your face, the answer is prayer. May you get ready, stay tuned, and let's get right onto the message. And I'm handling one more time the subject, the covenant of prayer. My opening scripture today is the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 19. Isaiah reveals the mind of God in his prophecy. And here he speaks in the days when King Cyrus was anointed by God to restore the temple of God. He was not a Jewish king. He was a foreign king and established by God to use the Gentile foreign finances and gold and silver opportunities and resources to build the house of God in Israel. And, and God told uh, uh, the king, King Cyrus, I'm sorry, that he is with him and, and that he will open the, the, the gates which no one has ever opened before. He will, he will cause all things to be loosed. And uh, then in verse, verse 19, he says, I have not spoken in secret in dark places of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob. Now, so here God was saying that I, I, there are things I've not made secret at all. I've made it very plain. And I don't speak in dark places in the whole earth on certain issues. There are some mysteries I keep to myself. But there are some mysteries and blessings and principles I make very clear to everybody on the earth. Now, look at the scenario within which God was speaking these words. Let's look at verse 1 to verse 3. Isaiah 45 from verse 1 to verse 3. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand have I holden, to subdue nations before him, and I will lose the loins of kings and and open before him the two livid gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Verse 2 says, I will go before him, and, the, and I will make crooked places straight, and I will break in pieces the bars, the gates of brass, and cut in asunder the bars of iron. So God gives King Cyrus a purpose driven life. He gives him a dream and a vision. He gives him some serious plan of action. 
but God also understands the bottlenecks and the difficulties on the pathway, not only of the king, but the pathway to the fulfillment of that dream. You see, God gives big dreams, God gives great calls and great callings, and he understands the challenges, but he also Expect us, us not to look, out, look on the challenges, not to focus on the challenges, but to focus on him. Because as much as those challenges are no problems to God, he understands our frame, he knows our weaknesses, and he knows that these are impediments to every human person or impediments to you. That's why he, he inquires and requires sorry, you to look up unto him, to, to, to expect him to help you. Therefore, creating the atmosphere for the need for you to call upon him as a covenant link between you and him because of that purpose. So God gives you a dream. He doesn't expect you to fulfill it alone. He expects you to understand that he's with you and for you to understand that he's expecting you to lean upon him and not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, you should acknowledge him, acknowledge his help, and acknowledge his purpose. So he tells king, the, the king Cyrus that there are, there are, there are mountains to, to climb in this vision. There are gates of brass which must be broken. There are crooked paths ahead of you. And there are all kinds of kings who are sitting on gates and on, on strongholds of wealth that you need to fulfill this. But I the Lord, I will hold your hand and I will move the unmovable, I will shake the unshakable, and that I will remove the irremovable, and I will cause you to recover in the most ir irrecoverable environment. So God is calling a man to walk through impossible situations, naturally impossible. I, I hope everybody listening to this message can relate to the fact that uh, there are certain things which are just impossible, not only for you, but for anybody. To, to prevail upon. And God does things like that. Number one, to let every man know that we are, we are but flesh. To let everybody know that you have a limitation. And he understands that. To let you know where you are. But also to let you know who he is and where he is. You see, the best way to succeed in life is to let God be God. And you also let you be you. Don't play the God in your life because it's an impossible thing. Neither are you supposed to play the God factor in anybody's life. You cannot be somebody's personal Holy Spirit. Let God handle that. Jesus Christ told the disciples and the Pharisees that give to Caesar what is Caesar and give to God what is God. That's the wise highway of prominent success in, any human, in, in every human race or generation. So here, verse 3, God speaks to, to, to King Cyrus again in this great vision ahead of him. I don't know about you, but I'm speaking to somebody here who has a huge plan, who has a huge vision. You could be a pastor, you could be a businessman, you could be a corporate leader, or you could be an attorney, a politician. But with this huge, great, great passion you have, with the impossibilities, which, which are much more than the possibilities, God is speaking directly to you and putting keys into your hands that there's a key called the covenant dynamics of prayer. Prayer is not just a dialogue, but it's an activator of the covenant of God's help. It brings God's mandate into your world. It brings God's authority into your world. It brings God's, God's, God's glorious, wise ways of doing things. It invites God. It's, it's, it, 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 it puts God in a place where he cannot say no to your, to your cry. Verse 3 says, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. So there are treasures which are uh, not yet revealed to you. It's, it's, they are in dark places as far as your understanding is concerned. It may not necessarily be an evil place, but anything that is not within your scope of understanding and revelation is, is kind of dark unto you. Or, or in, in the, 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 the peripheral, the, the, just the wrong side of your side. 
But number two, there are other things which are also kept in dark places. People hide things from you. And the devil loves to just prevent you from your success. It's a dark place. God says, I will break those codes. I'll give you treasures which are not within your reach. I will go to where you cannot go. I will do what you cannot do. And I have the advantage you don't have. And if you call upon me, I will make my advantage to, to make your disadvantage uh, as though it never happened or they never were existing were in existence and hidden treasures of secret places so there are dark treasures there are treasures in dark places and there are riches in secret places you never know who is next door to you uh, who might have we who might may have something you need that could be a, a treasure in, in secret places or riches in secret places. God knows how to move mountains on your behalf. He has the understanding. He understands the systems of world of the world. He understands the systems of global economy and social economies and socio-economic values. He knows the systems of transportation. He understands the systems of education. He understands the systems of science and technology. He understands the systems of family life, uh, trade and commerce. Uh, he understands the system of politics, government and governance. Uh, he understands the system of the, ju of the judiciary, the law. He understands the system of the executive, the, the presidencies and the executive powers of the earth. He understands the governmental powers and gubernatorial authorities. He understands the power of legislation. He understands everything which has to, to do with the nitty gritties of social governance and human activities, including family affairs. He says that there are riches I know in secret places which you don't know. God brings balance. He will give you technical bl blessings and moral support and spiritual covering. This is God. How can you say no to God? So God was introducing himself and what he can bring to the table to a king like Cyrus who was educated and who understood what king, kingly power was all about. And he was looking at this great God talking to him as a king in the language that kings understand, you see. He was, talking to, to, he was talking to this king about treasures and riches and gates and, and, and the powers that move things. And this king was understanding exactly what God was saying. You see, God communicates to the revelation of your state of mind and your spiritual state of being and your level of maturity. This is God. I love him. He's powerful. I love him. He is wonderful. I love him. He is caring. I love him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's very contemporary and he's very powerful. He's very real. He's very practical. This God was bringing what he could offer to the table of negotiation and to the table of partnership with Cyrus, king of Babylon, who was being commissioned to handle a major project in Judah, in Israel. Wow. I pray this day that may God bring King Cyrus in your way. May God command people who understand your business world to invest into your world. And may those who, who can help you, help you real good. Because God commands them. God opens their heart. These are treasures. These are riches in secret places. Verse 19b of Isaiah chapter 45 God makes a profound statement. He says that I am telling you something which I have made very open to every human personality. He says, I have not spoken in secret in the dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek, you, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness and I declare the things that are right. God said that there's one thing I have not kept from anybody. Some things I have. But this one I have not. And what is that? The fact that I did not tell the human race to seek me in vain. Wow. God is saying, trust me. Let the French know. Let the Russians know. Let the, the, the Asia world know. Let the African world understand. Let those in the Southern Pacific, those of the North Pole, let the Eskimos know. Let the Canadians understand this. Let the Washingtonians, the Seattle people, the Bellevues, uh, and the Federal Way folks, let, 
Tacoma and everybody in the Northwest understand that I, have not, I am not expecting anybody to seek me in vain. That a covenant remembrance or a covenant activation of the very secret heart of God that I am promising you that if only you will seek me, it shall not be in vain. If you will call upon me, it will not be in vain. If you will believe in me, it will not be in vain. If you will trust me, it will not be in vain. I have not told anybody on this earth that seek God in vain. There is no futility in God. There is no vanity in God. There is no, 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 no decadence in God. There is no desolation in God. God is the God of results, the God of purpose, the God who drives results, the God who makes things happen. If there's nothing that he can do, he creates new things. This God is the God I present to you in the atmosphere of covenant prayer. Well, you know, the book of Isaiah says, sorry, the book of Hebrews, he says, those who must come to God must first believe that he is, that he exists, and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Seeking God is in the, the perimeters of prayer. You must first believe that he exists. You must first believe that he can do anything. He can exceed your expectations. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly ab uh, above all that you can ask or think. Just tell me your most wildest stretched imaginations of expectation. God says it's just a microcosm of what I can do. Give me your best shot, says the Lord. I will exceed it abundantly. Wow. When the Northwest begins to call upon God, when we begin to really pray, he will exceed our expectations. He will take all these great things to, to new levels. He will take all these breakthroughs of the Northwest to new levels. He will take all, all the knowledge we have to new levels of things we have no clue could ever happen. So our prayers break the bank code of knowledge, bank code of greatness. The heavens mysteries of revelation are opened like, the, like a new space new horizons all released to us because God has found people who trust him, who love him, who call upon him and who desire him, who expect him to move according to his word. So when we call upon God, we don't say God move. We say God, you said you will move, you see. You say you will move. He loves it when we put his word back to him. We, we, we stand upon his word. Lord, you said this. You said this because he's a covenant keeping God. I am handling the subject, the covenant of prayer. So take God's word back to him. You said that you are my shepherd. I shall not want. You make me to lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside the still waters for your own name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, you said because you are my shepherd, I shall fear no evil. You see, you must learn to put God's word back to him because he's a covenant keeping God. I am handling the subject, the covenant of prayer. There has been times in my life where I just pace back and forth in my house or, or in my, my bedroom and I just read God's word back to him. You said this. You said this. There are times there was one time I opened the Bible. I said, Lord, read this. You said it because I believe in his word. If God says it, I believe it and that settles it because he's a covenant keeping God. I am talking about one more time the covenant of prayer, which means the moment we begin to pray, we know in advance what will happen. Surely he will come true. Many times it doesn't happen, it may not happen in our time. If it doesn't happen in your time, then that's not the best time because God's time is the best and in his time he makes all things beautiful. So God's beauty, God's glory, God's power, God's results, dynamics are in his time and every time is connected to God's time and all the chronos and all the Kairos moments are all in, in, in God's time. So God's time is the time which sovereignly moves all things in his time. And when I pray, I connect to his time. And all things beautiful shall be released upon my life. I declare unto the Northwest, this is God's time for us. This is God's time for a breakthrough. This is God's time for this Northwest to become the most glorious uh, Northwest than any other state. This is where things can begin to happen much more than they have ever happened. The key is prayer, not sciences. The key is prayer, not finances. 
The key is prayer. Prayer is not only to bring results. Prayer is to bring God into your world. To enhance fellowship with God. To promote partnership with God. I see the elevation of God of the Northwest. It shall be a place that shall be well sought after. It shall be called the land in which God is well delighted in. It shall be a place of blissfulness. The mountains shall skip. The trees shall clap their hands. And the birds shall sing again. And the Northwest shall be called the land of our God. The best place of God. It shall be called the garden of Eden of God. The Northwest. Oh, the Northwest. Arise, shine. For your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. God shall shine upon the northwest one more time. And many nations shall hear the voice of God in the land. They shall say, let's go to the northwest. Not because of Microsoft, not because of Boeing aircraft, not because of Amazon, but because we hear the voice of God is in the land. And everybody is, is prospering in the presence of the Lord. And God's presence becomes the, 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 the main factor of the Northwest. We are moved as a people because God is an, in, our, in, in, is in our midst. God is the movement in every movement. I hear the sound of God. I hear God say, I am coming into the Northwest. And therefore, there is a passion being ignited in all the ports of the Northwest to arise and welcome our God. Call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. I see the revival of love in the Northwest. I see the revival of passions in God's presence. I see the revival of worship. I see the revival of God's vision. I see the revival of the God lifestyle. I see the revival of knowledge for which invention. God is coming back to the Northwest. He created the Northwest. He knows how to fix it. He knows what to do. Hear ye the voice of the Lord, that God shall visit the Northwest with his glory, and his glory shall cover all of the north of America because something has been ignited in the northwest i hear the sound of the abundance of rain wow 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 i'm handling the covenant of prayer well let's look at a few scenarios you see in the bible because one of the points i want to raise as i i, I begin to close my my message today is the the fact that if you are not hungry to see the impossible to become possible, then don't pray. Not only does prayer give us the maintenance of, of link with our God, but it, is, it, it creates the, the world that makes impossible things become possible. And every nation has impossible things to deal with. There are things God has allowed us to do. But there are other things, even if he allows it to do, we, we can't do it because they are above our limits. God says, I want to handle those issues in your life which are above you. As a matter of fact, God created those worlds of impossibility around you for one purpose, that his purpose shall be fulfilled, which is that you will let God be God and you will let God to create around you Everything that makes you seek him. Because he did not create you to be independent of him. So he put limitations in your life so that you will see the imperative need for you to always seek his face. So that what he planned came, came to pass and will come to pass and never again will fail. Don't ever walk one more day without God. And this God, in the practical terms, is Jesus who lives in your heart and who prays through you, who teaches you what to do. Give our lives to Jesus. Let's give our heart to Jesus. Lord, the Northwest is your portion. In the book of Daniel, please look at Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2, I read from verse 10. This was a scenario where Daniel was in captivity in, in Babylon. And there was a king in Babylon called Nebuchadnezzar. He was a very heinous king. He had a dream which troubled him the whole night. And unfortunately, when he woke up, or I may say providentially, he woke up uh, with the fear of the dream, yet forgetting the very uh, scenarios of the dream. It shook him so badly 
He called all the wise men and all the magicians and all the sorcerers with all their crystal balls, etc., brought them all in, believing that with the omens and the charms and the amulets and all that they would do, that somehow they will be able to recall the dream which he forgot and also the interpretation. Well, interpretation of dreams could be difficult. How much more to recall a dream that someone had and who forgot? And you are supposed to pull that kind of information out from the unseen world, from his brain, or through, from his pillows, or what? This was a difficult point. This was a difficult scenario. This was an impossible scenario. It looks like a, the metaphor of the impossibilities that we find on the earth, even in the Northwest. There are some things which are just impossible. Impossible. I mean, practically impossible. Absolutely impossible. Just impossible. I am handling those kind of scenarios that to the child of God who loves prayer, who understands prayer, those impossible uh, platforms must be a common playground for you because of the God you walk with. You are able to tread on those uncommon grounds because of the God who is your shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So where the human strength ends, you begin a journey with God. God loves adventure. And the adventure of faith is what I'm talking about. Prayer brings you into the adventures of faith. It's good to receive your healings. It's good to receive your peace. But from that point, there is more beyond. Prayer takes you into the deep waters of God. Jesus Christ meets Peter in Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5 presents the first moment where Peter met with Jesus. And Jesus finishes preaching. He borrows Peter's empty boat. And after ministering on the boat, he asks Peter, Peter, I'd like you to just catch some fish. Just, just, just throw your, your net and catch some fish. And Peter said, the whole night we've tried. I am a savvy fisherman. There is some, there is, this has been an impossibility. Hello? For 10 hours, the whole night, the whole night, possibly 12 hours from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So Lord Jesus... It doesn't work. This is not, it, it doesn't work. We've tried it already. It's, we all come to the, 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 the bump of impossibilities, everybody. Medical impossibilities, science impossibilities, marital impossibilities, biological, psycho, uh, psy psy psychotherapeutic impossibilities, etc. You see? And God understands that. So he created a system to, to, to break those codes for us. The covenant of prayer. Is my subject matter. This is chapter 2 of the same message. Now, so here, Peter tells the Lord, Lord, I have tried the whole night. What he, he, what he said, we, we have toiled the whole night. He used the word toil. We've toiled the whole night. But at your word, we shall go the extra mile. And guess what? When he threw the, at the net onto the right side, on, sorry, onto the deep side, they caught so much fish. The same place where he did not see fish, when he moved with the partnership with God, there were results. He said, there are several scenarios like that. I don't know who you are. I may be speaking to a Peter right now. In your marriage, in your business, in your politics, whatever you do as a pastor. But Christ is telling you that thank God you, you can understand your limitations. It makes belief in God look so good. Hello? Prayer is what takes you to the realm. That orbit of the impossibility where God takes you through the very adventures of glory by your faith, which is proved by your prayer life. So here was Daniel. And Daniel was, was among strange people because you know he, had, he was a captive in Babylon. A, a, a world that did not know the God of, Ab of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They had no clue about the, the God who created all gods. They were all in, into idols and, and shrines and stuff like, like that. That was what they knew. And I'm not judging them, but that's what, where their revelation was. So the king Nebuchadnezzar said, 
I will kill every wise man, every prophet in the land, anybody who he thinks that has a little bit of understanding of the spiritual world. If they cannot tell me the dream and its interpretation, your head will be lopped off. And in those days, anything King Nebuchadnezzar said went, became a law. So Daniel said, well, why is this thing so serious? Why is the king so troubled about this particular matter? But before Daniel came on the scene, listen to what the, the, these Chaldeans said. Uh, which, which is a very important key to our next discussion. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, I'm talking about Daniel chapter 2, verse 10. There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Wow. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such a thing at the magi at to any at any magician, sorry, or astrologer, or Chaldean. So the king's question seemed to have been, hmm, a provoker of the impossible. Sounds like something God will set up. God, God knows how to set the human race up with impossible platforms just so as to prove who he is. I thank God that he does that every day. So men will know who God is. That men will allow God to interfere in the affairs of men. So men will see the importance of God. That men will, will know that, you know what? You can't live without God. Which makes prayer very important. Prayer, 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 prayer. I will pray. I will never stop praying because there are limitations around me which, which need to be removed. So I can move on. I see this every day because I have a dream and I have a vision and I am apprehended with a calling with which God has apprehended me. And this calling of my life is so huge that I can never achieve any bit of it except by his help. 